Hi, and welcome to the August 5th, 2023 edition of the Astro Energy Astrology Podcast with me, Shelly Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I want to welcome you. We're going to go over what's coming up for the week. And it seems a little quiet. I was looking at it before we recorded here. And there are some squares. There are some friction aspects, but there are no new moons, full moons, um, changing signs. It seems pretty straightforward. So we're going to get right into it. And I've got the chart today um, set up for Aries on the horizon. That's the natural ruler of the zodiac. So the first house, as you will see, is right along the horizon. And so um, having Aries on the first house cusp, it just kind of gives us all a base to start with when we look at astrology and see what's going on for the week. You can see as the planets aspect different signs. If you know your sign, it's a little bit easier to find out where it is. And so we're going to talk about Aries first. Of course, the moon today, it is Saturday, August 5th, and the moon is in Aries today. This week, the moon goes from Aries to Cancer. So if you take the seven days and divide it up into two and a half day increments, we've got um, today, obviously, the moon just went into Aries. So the next two and a half days, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and on Monday, it changes signs to Taurus will be Aries energy. So drive, ambition, interest, self-interest, uh, sales, emergencies, firefighters, emergency workers, all the usual suspects. But um, Aries is also construction and doing something uh, forthright, you know, putting yourself out there. And so it can also rule the head. It does rule the head and the blood in the body. So you may find something comes up with heads. It uh, can be concussions. Doesn't have to be. Thank goodness. Not good. Um, but it is assertive, aggressive, aggressive, masculine energy. So that means the sensitivity of the moon basically um, defers to the energy of Aries. It means that mothers are a little bit more assertive about their points of view. Uh, the children might act up more right now, more tantrums are seen, and more aggressive, assertive action is taken. And then we have Chiron at 19 Aries. So that's kind of de rigueur. It's typical for right now because that's where it's at. It's very slow moving energy. Uh, Chiron in Aries is showing us where we have been wounded in attracting masculine energy or the male archetype. It's also where we express our male archetype. So that is the storyline currently. You can attract people as a reflection of that energy where your wounding has taken place, or you may express it to other people. And then VX on this chart is just the vortex, vertex, excuse me, vertex. It is just a point in the sky. Um, so the vertex is a point where on the earth, there is a vertical line going around and there's also like an equator line. And the vertex is a point where those two lines meet in the rotation of the earth. So it's apparently hotly debated, but and that's a general understanding of the energy. So it is considered a point. This is off the web. It, it, the vertex is considered one of the points in our charts signaling events that happen to us through no effort of our own, which um, sounds a bit like a destiny point. But keep in mind that there are a lot of ways of defining the events that occur in astrology. And this is just one of those where, you know, I mean, as for instance, the Arabic parts, um, that's a way of defining differentiation between the position of two planets when you split them, kind of like a midpoint, or there are mathematical compositions to get to an Arabic part. It's pretty involved. I'm not going to get into it now, but that's a, a rough estimation of what it is. And so uh, the expression of this energy of the vertex is what happens to us through no effort of our own, but it is a point in the sky where you get a crossing of a uh, longitude and latitudinal points. 
Okay, so anyway, that's in Aries right now. And that's where the energy is expressed in our lives through no effort of our own. The North Node, 27 Aries, exactly on the vertex. So the North Node, and again, that's also a point where uh, the moon crosses the equator or the ecliptic. You know, of course, the Earth is not exactly sitting in the sky upright. So it's at an angle. So anyway, that's what that is. And then the North Node at 27 Aries is where we feel a little bit uncomfortable moving towards something. But and then the siren just happened, which is also an Aries energy. Um, I do live very close to a lot of emergency vehicles going by. There's a police station and a fire station not close, not far from me. So you'll hear that quite a bit. Anyway, um, yeah, so those energies are really showing up right now and today with what's going on and it just brings forth the energy of Aries masculine energy drive and all the things I've listed uh, to our awareness and so we are expressing uh, the energy of those uh, the Aries energy within the different um, areas of our lives moon is home and family could be children uh, Chiron is our wounding Vertex is, again, something that happens without our express input. And then uh, fortunate, it can be fortunate. And then North Node is very fortunate. So the Vertex and the North Node are really positive forward momentum energies that are coming in in an individual sense. Aries is very, it is, it is a commitment, positive energy, but it does act very in its own energy, in its ego, because the first house is the ego. It is the personality. So it is putting forth energy from spirit and the divine into the sense of self. And that is what we're seeing right now. We're being a little bit more selfish or self-centered. Um, self-centeredness doesn't have to be a negative thing. Self-centered can mean that we are grounded in who we are in our personality. And so I just want to throw that out there because I think we need a redefining of what selfishness is. I see it more as self-interested. People who are self-interested don't necessarily have the capacity for compassion or seeing another person's point of view. Selfish means that we focus on ourself and the things that express self, but that's just me. Okay, that's not me being selfish, that's just me expressing what that means in my vernacular. Okay, so Taurus, we're gonna see the energy of Taurus coming in um, after the weekend. The moon moves into Taurus at 2.25 a.m. Eastern on Monday and 11.25 uh, 11, 11, yeah, 11 p.m. Pacific. So we'll see that energy going on. Uh, Jupiter still in Taurus. Jupiter doesn't retrograde until a little ways down the way. Uh, let's see. Jupiter retrogrades on the 3rd of September. And so we're not going to really have... Um, that energy hit us for another month, but we are going to be entering the Jupiter shadow period. And that just means that, of course, Jupiter's expansion, Jupiter retrograde can be contraction, more like Saturn energy, owning this uh, Jupiter and Taurus, great expansion of money, more awareness of money. Uh, because Uranus is also in Taurus, there is technological shifts around money, uh, visas, point of sale purchases on technology and electronics. It was really interesting. I went into Target this week and uh, I was met with a woman at the entrance saying, basically, if you didn't, if you were using a debit card, there was no ability to purchase on a debit because there was a system-wide uh, outage for that time. And it lasted a couple hours that you couldn't purchase on that particular card. And it was the full moon in Aquarius. So I'm like, oh, full moon in Aquarius, there you go. It's a national thing. It's a global thing. It's a broad ranging technological outage. But Uranus is also direct still. Jupiter is getting ready to go retrograde in a month. So we will see over the course of August, the expansion of glitches and technology because Jupiter rules foreigners and foreign currency. This could mean that markets, uh, global markets are going to have something going on later in the month. But as Jupiter is still direct, it is an expansion of communication with other countries about currency. It is also love involving people of foreign culture because Jupiter is foreign, foreign culture, foreign people. 
Um, it could be in any country, they will be a foreigner to your country. And it can also include travel because the two are kind of married, foreigners and travel. So it's an expansion of travel. I found out um, this week that I will be traveling in September. Very excited about that. I'll be going to Michigan, Chicago, and Connecticut. So it's going to be a really lovely time of year to go late September. I'll get to see the fall leaves and experience some of the chill in the air. I'm very happy about that as I love change of seasons. Taurus, Jupiter, and Uranus are very much expanding our awareness around what it means to have freedom within a love connection, especially because Jupiter rules Sag and Uranus rules, or yeah, Uranus rules Aquarius. Both signs are the most freedom loving signs of the zodiac. And Taurus means making it tangible, grounding it in. So it is about how can I express love and still feel the freedom to be myself and have that independent nature. Um, and then it's also about becoming independent around money and understanding the expression of currency and not being as bogged down by our finances and really learning how to detach from what traditional views Uranus, non-traditional views of money are and value because Taurus rules value. Are you getting your value? And I personally am evaluating value, my personal value as it comes to my career because I don't feel like I'm really earning the level that I've been educated and certified to. So it's really how do we get our lives open to bringing that in. It is an allowance. If you look up the law of attraction, it's about allowing. Gemini, you've got Vesta still there at 17 degrees. Um, let me see if there's something I wanted to touch on with the Taurus energy. So we do have a grand trine in Earth right now involving Uranus, Pluto, and Mars is really not there. Well, Mars is at 16 degrees. So over the course of the month, Mars is going to be cycling more into a grand trine with Uranus and Pluto. And that means that it's activating this freedom, this depth of communication and understanding. Um, you know, Virgo is a communicator and a teacher. Mars is the energy that takes action to understand and learn lessons. So there is a really strong awakening around understanding, around teaching and learning as we get farther on in August. Of course, we come into Virgo time late August, which is the beginning of the school year. I've already got a lot of, uh, there's already a lot of product out at the stores for education. I'm like, it's July. It's literally not even the middle of the summer. And we're already pushing the school agenda, which is interesting because Mars is in Virgo, and that's really what encompasses that energy. Okay, Gemini, Vesta, that means duality of home. There's two energies revolving around home. It could be two people, two homes, um, two ways of looking at a communication story. Two, I have two phones. I just got two phones through um, a internet provider. So it is the duality of communication, the duality of ideas, and the duality of home because Vesta rules home and heart. We do have Cirrus at four degrees, or excuse me, 14 degrees of Libra, which is in trine to Vesta. We don't have any Uranian energy right now. If you have mid-range Uranus planets, you're going to have a grand trine that's waking you up to the harvest around home bringing in a, a certain kind of clarifying energy around food and diet. I personally am seeing some um, of that energy wanting to change diet, wanting to clear out more of the sugar and the alcohol from my diet. You may find that yourself is coming in. And then moving into Cancer, uh, Cirrus, uh, not Cirrus, Juno is in Cancer, late degrees, 24 degrees. That is an awakening energy of understanding the relationship of marriage and home because, of course, cancer is home with the moon energy currently squaring the energy of cancer. And that means on Monday, we're going to feel this uh, overnight, again, probably late Sunday, early Monday, there will be some kind of you know, friction 
between the action of the moon, the drive to create something new, and where we are with a marriage situation. Something is transforming and transitioning, but also it's a friction point so that we can learn and grow. And so something is shifting through a stress aspect of drive and action versus comfort and security. So we're going to have our comfort and security really challenged at that time. And then uh, Leo, Leo is coming up. Uh, let's see, we don't really get the moon energy in Leo. We do get moon in Gemini on Wednesday at 9.05 a.m. Eastern and 6.05 a.m. Pacific. It will be uh, closer to mid-afternoon in England timeline. And then we've got uh, the Gemini energy goes until the evening at 6.52 p.m. Eastern on Friday the 11th. And that means that Wednesday, Thursday, and some of Friday, we're going to have Gemini energy, which is more social and communicative. Of course, Trump is a Gemini, so more news about what's going on with him Wednesday and Thursday. We've got Leo planets. The sun is at 12. Leo, happy birthday, Leo. Happy birthday to my son, S-O-N, S-U-N. His birthday is tomorrow, Sunday, the 6th. And he will be quarter of a century old. I'm very excited for him to start the second half of his 20s. And I think things are in major shift for him coming into this next part of the decade. So exciting energy for him. And then we've got uh, Vulcan. I left Vulcan in this chart. Vulcan is an interesting energy. Again, as I've said before, Vulcan is not particularly a planet that has been found yet. So right now it is more an energy in the sky. Vulcan is the apparent planet that is out in the atmosphere, which is an anomaly astronomically. We haven't found it, but there is an astronomical anomaly, which is kind of hard to say, but that means that they think there is a planet there by the energy given off, but they can't find it yet. When they find it, uh, it has been said that it will be called Vulcan. And that, of course, is the energy similar to Virgo right now and very intellectual, very uh, emo non emotional and intellectually strong in Airy, uh, in, blah, 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 in Leo. And so we are going to see that energy express uh, in a detachment energy. It is interesting because it is retrograde, which means more Aquarian energy. In Leo, Leo retrograde is more of an Aquarian energy, which is a detached intellectual energy. So there is a certain amount of that intellectualization of the connection between two people, between the bond in friendship, in children, in creativity. We're intellectualizing our emotions and our, our bonds to other people. And Venus is at 25. Um, let's see, we have North Node at 27 Aries. We don't have any Sagittarius energy unless you have late degree Sagittarius. There is only a trine between Venus and the North Node. So that is bringing up a story of destiny between the Venusian energy of desire, goddess energy. What do we desire in love, in money, um, in value? And it is a time where we are changing the storyline. The North Node in Aries gives us the drive to do something about it. And then there's a sextile to the south node in Libra. So Venus, goddess of love, value. Uh, Libra, south node is bringing up energy of the past. And because it is really an energy of shift and awareness, we are looking to the connection between two people in a, an, an emotional bond, in a value sense. And then the positive past energy coming in for balance between relationships. Keep in mind, Libra is a triangulating energy. It's an air energy, which always has multiples of something. So for Libra, it is triangulation. And that means three of something. So three circumstances, three dynamic, um, you, me, and the other. Basically, it doesn't have to be someone else in the relationship, but usually it means there's a heavy influence of another person in the relationship. And then the North Node is wanting to find this situation where we're individuals expressing out the individuality and taking action towards something new and greater. It's a new beginning, but based on 
the value, the dynamic of two. So that's what that energy is showing me. Um, Virgo, we have Mercury at nine Virgo, of course, uh, moving closer and closer to the Virgo retrograde of Mercury. And that happens the 22nd-ish of August, Mercury goes retrograde. So we are in the shadow period. And so whatever comes up now about communication styles, where we're putting our intellect, um, definitely in Leo, you've got, again, the connection. Oh, no, in Mercury. Mercury in Virgo. At nine degrees, Mercury in Virgo. Mercury in Virgo, again, about teachers, about helpers, educators, and military people. Anyone who is a helper, someone who works in service, service to others is coming up. What is the storyline about that? Teachers, uh, military, doctors, nurses, etc. cetera. Pallas Athena is the goddess energy. She imbues um, a higher vibrating intellectual awareness, like the most perfect feminine divine energy you can bring into the situation is very much a clarifying energy and an overarching divine feminine energy to this dynamic. Um, I find it interesting. I haven't gone to a doctor for like 20 years, which is really bad, I know. And I'm rectifying that now. But the first doctor I went to, I, I personally wanted and feel more comfortable with women doctors. And I went to a man and I just went to a woman this past week. So it really does show that energetically in the astrology of the time. And I have four planets in Virgo. So it's showing that medical doctor energy is coming in as feminine especially with Pallas Athena there. And then you have the masculine energy, also the Mars taking action. It could also mean that there is a doctor that you enjoy who has a sensitive nature who can really help you anyway, which is also a fair game. Um, but Mercury is understanding, bringing what you know to the situation and expressing the understanding in a logical sense. So that also plays into the energy right now. Um, Mars in Virgo, like we've discussed, is going to be about taking action. It could also be accidents. As we get into the last 10 degrees, there's more of a possibility of things not going the way you want. It's quick action that is unexpected because of that Mercury connection. Mercury is in Virgo, can be anything right now. And then, of course, with all the Aries energy, that those two are quincunx to each other, so they're not really cooperative. So just be a little bit extra cautious for the month of August and September with what you're doing with quick action, because if you take too quick of action, you will miss things and that can result in negative outcomes. As a Virgo and um, someone on the road, just, just I'm slowing down and it's actually really good. I'm feeling really good getting in my car and just going, you know what, I'm going to be more meditative and, and just allow things to develop and not be so forthright and proactive because that's when, you know, things can go right. And don't get so defensive, which can also be a Virgo trait. Really quickly, um, Libra Cirrus, we've already discussed that. South Node and Libra, we've discussed that. So Librans, you're going to have that um, axis of Aries Libra, and it'll be about balance, but also balancing the cooperation in a relationship with a sense of self, which can sometimes get lost for Librans. Libra tends to be much more of the, I will give up myself for the cooperation of the better good and the higher good of the collective. You're not doing that as much right now and for the next year and a half with this energy coming in. Scorpio, um, your ruling planet, late Capricorn, it means that you are shoring up the structure of what you want to go towards. You are having to really face the structure and get real with always being in the emotion. And maybe now we're a little bit more practical, a little bit more shored up in the intellectual or the at least responsible, not necessarily intellectual as much as um, following through with what you know you have to do and not procrastinating as much. Sagittarius, no planets there right now, but the fire energy is really strong for you with the Leo, Venus, Sun, and Chiron in Aries with the North Node. So you're really feeling the triangulation, the trine energy from doing things, you know, the, going out there and taking the action, as well as really paying attention to your value and the creative side of your nature, balancing it. You may have some travel coming up with Jupiter and Taurus for money. Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn, story has been going on for um, 
uh, what, 17 years? So yeah, I bet you're tired of it, but it is wrapping it up. It's wrapping the energy up towards the fall. So know that the stress aspects are going to be relieving a bit more as we get closer to fall and you know when Pluto goes direct. And then finally, we've got Aquarius. Nothing going on for you right now. It's a little bit of a breather because you're going to be really lit up with Pluto and Aquarius next year and until 2026. So Saturn, Saturn, Neptune, and Pisces, retrograde, both of them. It is, again, more practical. Uh, Rose-colored glasses off right now. And then the energy of uh, Taurus is actually really positive for you because Jupiter is a co-ruler of Pisces. And that's really understanding the dynamic of money. And maybe you're a little forgetful right now. I know my daughter is strong Pisces Mercury, and she's been really kind of distractible right now. That's kind of your thing right now as well. Okay, um, that's really the week. I think that there are a few aspects coming up that I want to touch on. One is Venus square Neptune on Wednesday. That's going to be a little bit emotional, maybe not feeling yourself. You might want to go and uh, get away from the collective a little bit at that time. Mars quincunx to Chiron on Friday of next week. Mars quincunx, Aries energy. Mars, of course, is the ruler of Aries. And 150 degrees away from Chiron and Aries is going to be an old karmic story around taking action in education, help, health, and welfare. So just pay attention to that on Friday. Um, yeah, it's about that quick action, you know, acting then thinking. So be careful on Friday of this coming week around action and accidents. Okay, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this this week. Pretty mellow. Um, we do have the new moon coming up in Leo, not this week, but the next week. So that's what we're going to probably talk about next week. Now, as far as Lionsgate, Lionsgate is 8-8. Eight, eight. It is the 8th, which is Tuesday. And you can do your affirmations for the Leo energy, again, around value, creating money, creating value, creating. And it is a portal, they say. Um, yeah, it was interesting because I do watch this lady who channels another uh, young entity, a uh, very wonderful energy known as Maitland. Uh, her name is Jamie Butler, the channel, if you want to look her up on YouTube. And Maitland was talking about Lionsgate. And Lionsgate is not everybody's actually going to be tuned into the energy. So it doesn't affect everybody. If you don't recognize it, you don't get it, which I think is kind of true for most things. If you're not tuned into it, you're not really aware of it. It may not necessarily sink into your awareness or sink into your life. But if you are aware of it, it is about getting attention, having a connection to another. What is the value of the relationship? And also about children and creating something beautiful. So those are the themes. And it is about value. Okay, so on Tuesday, if you want to recognize that and really uh, write your intentions for the value you are creating in your life, it's a good day to do it. And with that, I will say goodbye. You have a great week and we'll see you again next week. Take care. Thank you for watching. Bye. That's a really poor explanation. Hi, this is Shelly. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.